there was a company in Michigan who had to recall over 3,000 pre-rolls, I believe, and it was due to someone licking the pre-rolls, allegedly. So that is disgusting before COVID, right? It makes it even worse that this person was doing this during all of this COVID commotion. And, you know, I don't know the company personally. I would bet that they don't get any kind of third party verification. All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Cannabis Corona Report, where we speak to cannabis companies that are succeeding or helping other companies succeed during the global pandemic. And today, we are joined by Tyler Williams, the founder of Cannabis Safety and Quality. Tyler, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. I, I'm excited. Today's conversation is something that we pretty much take for granted. When we go to the grocery store, we just assume or trust that all the food that we buy is going to be safe. I mean, when's the last time you thought, I sure hope this doesn't make me sick? I mean, we, you know, you just don't think that. It's kind of, it's, it's really pretty cool when you think about it, but making sure that the food we buy is safe, it just doesn't happen by accident. There's an enormous amount of work going on behind the scenes that gives us that peace of mind. And Tyler, you come to cannabis after years of experience working in food safety. So before we talk about cannabis, I want to talk a little bit about how we make sure the food we buy at grocery stores is safe and what happens when it's not. So let's just pick a product like say lettuce, which is always in the media. <laughs> Tell us how you would help a lettuce producer ensure that their produce is safe. And then tell us what happens when things go wrong. Yeah, absolutely. So lettuce is, is a great example, and, and I'll probably reference that throughout our conversations that we have today. So you have the regulations and requirements that come from the government, right? And then you have these requirements from various different audit standards and industry standards and best practices. So together, those combine to really formulate all the different requirements that these companies have to meet. So with lettuce, for example, not only do they have to meet the state and local requirements, as well as the federal FDA requirements and USDA requirements, but now if you want to sell your product to Walmart or Costco, well, now you have to get a third-party audit from a completely separate organization that's not even government affiliated. So you're kind of hit with these two essentially governing bodies that just are constantly monitoring your performance and ensuring that things like huge uh, listeria recalls don't happen, right? You just assume that these companies would do it on their own, but there's a lot going on within their company that easy to miss stuff. So that's probably why the extra layer of third-party protection makes a lot of sense. Now that we kind of have an idea of why protection in, in, is in place in our food, let's switch to cannabis. What did you see in the cannabis industry that prompted you to form cannabis safety and quality? That's a great question. And I, I don't think there's one instance per se that really led me to say, okay, well, what if we took what we've been doing in the food industry forever and apply that to the cannabis industry? It was kind of, of multiple instances from sites coming to us as a food safety company and saying, hey, can you help us navigate through these regulations or just seeing in the news, great example is, is the vaping crisis, if you will, that we kind of had in, in 2019 and a little bit into 2020. And that wasn't even from the legal market. You know, that's from the illicit market, but it, it had a huge impact on the legal market. And it just all of those things combined really allowed me to see an opportunity to bring what we've been doing in the food industry, to bring what has been done in the dietary supplement and the pharmaceutical industries and bring it over to the cannabis and put our own spin on it and say, okay, now we have a standard that is best fit for the cannabis industry from seed to sale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, clearly we see it. I just wasn't sure how somebody from the outside looking in saw that the cannabis industry needed some help. You mentioned the FDA. I, you know, I got to say that right now that's probably one of the more confusing aspects of the cannabis industry is what's the FDA's role? It maybe you can help us better understand the agency. What do they oversee? Is it just cannabis? Is it CBD? How much power do they have? Where does their power start or end? 
Right. So mainly their priority is all the food and beverage that's not covered under the USDA. They also are responsible for pharmaceutical, dietary supplements, medical devices, cosmetics, and then a couple other things as well. They're not really officially in charge of cannabis or even CBD at this point yet. We know that it's coming. We know that hopefully if we ever get to the point of federal legalization, that it will most likely be under the FDA. However, that being said, just taking the food industry as an example, the FDA doesn't have the budget or the resources to go to every single facility every year. What they do is go to what they call high-risk facilities or facilities that are continuously messing up, facilities that just had a recall, that get complaints, things like that. If you're a facility that's, you know, you're not selling a lot of products, you might not even get an inspector to visit your facility. And that's kind of where the third-party audits come into play and fill in that gap where the FDA just doesn't have the resources to do so. Now, with cannabis and CBD in particular, really there's two reasons the FDA is going to get involved at least this moment in time. If there's a major health concern, so if somebody's going to get sick from consuming that product, or if there's labeling issues such as health claims. Okay. So those are really the two instances where the FDA is going to say, hey, we don't have regulations in place, but guess what? We're going to enforce this. You mentioned recalls, and I think I recall. I think I recall <laughs> a, a story about a company in Michigan that had a recall in their pre rolls. Do you, do you know about that story? Oh yes, I know it very well. So, uh, <laughs> it's a weird one. It's the first of its kind that I've heard of, at least. Yeah, there was a company in Michigan who had to recall uh, over three thousand pre rolls, I believe, and it was due to someone licking the pre rolls allegedly. <laughs> So that is disgusting before COVID, right? It makes it even worse that this person was doing this during all of this COVID commotion that's going on. Oh, um, man. Yeah, there's a lot of problems with that. You know, I don't know the company personally. I don't know their internal processes. I would bet that they don't get any kind of third-party verification saying that they're doing the things that they're supposed to be doing as far as safety and quality. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, that right there makes it so that people appreciate why we need some government regulations <laughs> because that's just that's just not right. Right. But what steps can the industry take to protect the public and avoid situations like that but then not have like super onerous government involvement? Yeah, so I've been talking about this a lot lately and Sometimes I use the term self-regulated, and that's probably not the best phrase to use. I would think semi-self-regulated is, is mm -hmm. a little bit better. And what I mean by that is we know there's going to be regulations in place. We're not saying that there shouldn't be. There, there definitely needs to be. But what we can do in the interim is have this conscious mind as a cannabis grower or manufacturer that, hey, we need to set up programs and policies and procedures in place to ensure that we're producing the most safest and quality product because one, it's going to make us look better, but two, then we're also not killing anyone, which seems like <laughs> such a simple thing to do. But you know, we see recalls every day almost in, in the food industry, at least, and that's an industry that's been around for a long time. Sure. So with a semi-self-regulated approach by saying, okay, we're going to take some ownership now, the FDA is not going to step up and give us any guidance. So let's use a standard such as CSQ to build our programs, to implement those programs, and then have a third party come in and verify that we're doing everything that we're supposed to be doing at minimum once a year. That's, man, not just making people sick. You don't want to gross anybody out either. I mean, that's, right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's what's so funny about, you know, to me kind of getting off topic here, but with the the, the Michigan incident and licking pre-rolls. I mean, how many people have been, you know, smoking with their friends? And of course, they're licking the, the blunt wrap to, to roll it up and you pass it to your friend and you don't think anything of it. But it makes it so much more gross when it's a stranger, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Oh, my gosh. Well, you mentioned COVID and I, I, su I suspect it's really complicated things. How's it affected your business? 
Yeah. So from a CSQ perspective and really more so on the certification bodies who audit against the CSQ standard is the restrictions on travel. Facilities have heightened visitor policies restricting who can come in and and out of the facility. So it it makes it a little bit harder for these auditing bodies to, to go out and perform the audits. The facilities for the most part, will work with us. There are some that you can tell they kind of just want an excuse to get out of an audit. Uh, So that does come into play. But from our perspective, a lot of the clients that we work with, they understand the importance of getting these third-party audits and continuing that relationship to ensure that they have the most safest and quality products that they can produce. I think it makes sense. I really do. I think it's one of those things, like you said, nobody really wants to go through an audit, but you certainly don't want to go through a recall. Right. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things too, we try to educate people on in any industry that is heavily regulated or audited. The auditor is always going to be the bad guy. And that's not what they're there to do. They're there to you know, say, hey, these are the things that I've noticed that are wrong. They can't tell you how to fix them, but at least they give you the direction you need to go. And if need be, you can at then either use internal resources to fix the problem or hire an external consultant to fix the problem, however your process might be. But really that auditor is not there to just say, I got you on something. They're there Mm -hmm. to help you out and they want to see these facilities grow and be successful. Okay. And that's how, if somebody wanted to work with CSQ, they would just reach out to you and Yeah. So CSQ doesn't perform the audits. We license out the standard to certification bodies who are accredited to ISO 17065 in particular. But yes, you can go to our website. There's a load of information on there. You can download the standards, the scheme requirements all for free. I mean, it doesn't cost you anything to start building your own internal processes to the standard. So I encourage people to, at minimum, go and do that. And then when you're ready for that third-party verification and to get that audit, then you reach out to one of our licensed certification bodies on our website and get the audit through them. Oh, okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. We'll have all of Tyler's and CSQ's contact information in the show notes or mjbulls.com. You know, the industry's got a long way to go, but it's nice that we have experienced food safety people like Tyler helping us make sure that the future of our industry is safe and everybody that uses any of our products remain healthy. So Tyler, appreciate all of the work that you're doing and thanks for keeping us all safe. Yeah. Thanks for having me. 